Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about trellising. Ways you can grow vertically, ways you can support your plants. We'll also talk about the different vegetables that you can grow vertically and that also need support. I want to start with container gardening. A lot of us grow in containers. You can grow large vegetables in there. I have a series on that. I will uh, put the video in the uh, iCards. But trellising can be an issue, especially if you want to grow cucumbers or you want to grow green beans or you want to grow something that takes up a lot of space. The best thing that you can do that I recommend is you pick up some wire fencing. You want to get a gauge about this thickness. I can't recall what this is. It might be 14, somewhere between, I don't know, 11 and 14. But you want it to look like that. You don't need large spaces in here because we're not making cages. We're just making options for your uh, vine plants to grow up these. If I were setting up this from the start, I would build the trellis just like this, drop it into the container and then fill in the dirt. The dirt will support this. It will press it against the container and it's not going to fall over. If you wanted it to go higher, you would overlap another piece right here. You could go really up to eight feet and then you would have to tie it with zip ties or with string throughout here just to make it nice and sturdy. If you've already filled your containers and that happens, you can take the fencing wire, put it on the outside just like that. You'd have to tie a rope down there and secure it to the base, but you also want to use a bamboo pole. These are six foot poles. This is also something I use for trellising. I'll talk about those as we get to them. And you just weave it through here, out the back, weave it back inside and into the container. And you would want to do three of these. That will provide more support. And if you're growing something heavy on here, you could also do the same thing just to keep this from leaning forward. That would be up to you. I, like I said, I like the six foot bamboo poles you can buy. They'll cost anywhere from three bucks to seven bucks depending on where you buy them. One thing I like to do in the containers is to make a teepee. These are peppers. Peppers need to be supported. They're pretty fragile as they get bigger. They get the weight of the fruit on there. They're going to break if the wind comes or you try and pull on it. So trellis them up something like this. As you get to the top, I just like to tie them off and then these stakes are supporting each other. Same thing if you're growing a indeterminate tomato, a tomato that will grow and grow. This one will get about six or eight feet. I put in four posts, one right down the middle to support the tomato plant as it grows upwards, and then three posts around it for the um, suckers, the production stems, the side shoots that will come out of that, and then secure that up here. And this is nice and secure. And you can do different fruits and vegetables with this type of setup. Now, if you want to be creative, go to thrift stores, and I'm serious about this. I just dropped that there, and then the idea dawned on me to, uh, you know, maybe use this. This was $7.90 because it was functioning, but you can get them even cheaper, sometimes three bucks, four bucks when they're missing a part. These tripods for the camera make wonderful trellises, kind of artsy, but you can go to thrift stores and find a lot of supplies that you can use in your garden. Let's step over to this side. There's a couple things up here. Now, right over here, I'm using the single bamboo poles. This is just to get the tomatoes started, support them. They're going to need a stronger stake as they develop. But I use the thinner poles just for securing them as they get growing. This is one of my favorite trellises. I used to make this out of chicken wire, and I would put in those bamboo posts, create the V. I have a video on it from a couple years ago. But this is so much more durable. It's thick, it's welded, it's solid. I have it set up in a garden, I'll show you. And it was a little bit expensive, but this will last really forever. That was $16 at my local hardware store. I don't know where you would pick them up. But that is perfect for growing vines up one side and then back down the other side and you can grow them up again. So this is really useful. You could grow your squash, weave it through there, get it off the ground, cantaloupe, watermelon, cucumbers for sure. Your standard cage supports, you can also trellis up them with your vine crops. I'll show you what I did down further in the garden as we go. These are T-posts. These I think are five feet, I'm six feet, so I'm about a foot over that. You can get five of these for 20 to $25. And again, this, is, this garden I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in here yet, but you drop in a T-post just like that, cut some of the same fencing wire out of there and then you just drop it into 
these slots. It takes a little bit of work to get them in there, but once they're in, it's nice and secure. And I would put a second one down on that end, of course, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put on, put on here. So I wanted to show you, you know, what the idea would be. This is my asparagus. Whoop. Ran into one of those poles. This is my asparagus and it will flop over. I want it to stay uh, growing vertically and not sprawling out on the ground. I don't want to damage it. So I just put a T-post in there. String around the outer edge. Third post down further. Second post down further. Then one all the way down there. And that will support the asparagus from growing upwards. Peppers in my containers all have tomato cages in there or single stakes and that's enough to really support them. Here's your standard trellis that you can make with jute. Just six foot, actually these are eight foot one by one pole up uh, kind of poles, posts that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're about three dollars each and I'm just stringing jute across every six or eight inches and I'm just trellising up my Asian beans and as it's growing up I'll just twist it around like that and I'll let it work its way up. Same thing on a smaller scale in here with the peas. All supported. This isn't something you might want you would want to do with a particularly heavy crop but it's great for beans. This is what I'm going to be using a lot for my beans. Here are those trellises I showed you that I got for about 16 bucks. Growing cucumbers up one side down the other one right in the middle they'll do really well single stake for a tomato this is my watermelon you can grow watermelon vertically and I just put in two posts string every four inches and then I just weave the watermelon up there the next one it's ready for another uh, piece of juke going across there and I would work the vine all the way up once it gets too high you can then start weaving it back down and see how it does. What, and you don't have to grow all the watermelons hanging here because they'll get heavy. These are, I believe these are sugar babies. They're smaller. I'll support them. But you can take a lot of the vines, go up, bring the vines back down, let them pull energy into the plant, and you can let other vines sprawl across the open space, but it's just much more contained. So you can do both. You can grow it along the ground, and you can grow a lot of the vines going upward and that will allow for a lot of energy to be pulled into <coughs> excuse me into your um, watermelon or into the vegetable or fruit that you're growing this is the setup that I did a video on I will link that people thought it was a little bit expensive buying these 10 foot pieces of shelving rack I think they were like 10 or 11 dollars the whole setup costs about 15 dollars but this will last for years but you can also find these at stores that are going out of business at thrift stores and you can get them a lot cheaper and you can see that i'm just weaving a cucumber right up through there more cucumbers that is i believe a butternut squash that will get weaved right up there and i'll just show you real quick you can see dust on the leaves for beetles I recommend if you're dusting, put it on a couple of leaves, not all over across the whole plant. And you would just, don't over bend this, it'll snap. But find the right spot, gently poke it through. Sometimes the next leaf has to go through. And then you just weave your way up there, that will get 10 feet. Don't over dust your plants, just put it away from the flowers um, so it doesn't get to the pollinating insects. Beetles will crawl all over the place, they'll crawl through that and they will be taken care of. You can take the cages that are over there, tomato cages, I am using them for the peppers, and you can do something like this. This is cantaloupe. Put the first cage into the ground like that, and then you invert another one, tie it together, and it has this nice trellising space, tie it to a post, and you can weave your watermelon, you can weave your cantaloupe, um, your vine crops, your cucumbers right up that. Make sure you bend these down because you don't want to get poked in the eye but you just bend them down and I did that in two different places and they're working really well. This one is one with the watermelon. So you can kind of experiment and kind of just create your own things. When this is filled in, you're not even going to be able to see this trellis. These are actually used for framing. They're uh, I think two bucks at Home Depot. They're not 
as expensive as the one by ones which are square. These are nice and solid. I use these for my tomato plants. But you can put these in here in too. They're going to move a little bit, but you can then tie them off just like that. I'll show you an example. And they're nice and strong and you can trellis up beans. And that's what I'm doing with those. Those are beans that are starting to come up. How to come up with something creative for the uh, red beef steak that's in the tomato graft because I didn't want to puncture through the fabric pot. So the posts went to the right, to the left, and then I put a thin bamboo pole, two of them, in the middle to support it and then just tied them off. And that will work wonderfully to support that uh, beef steak as it grows. Here's an example of taking two posts, tying them together here. That gives them more support and then you'll just trellis the tomato right up that. You can pick up these types of cages. I think these were from gardeners. People, I didn't know where, I couldn't remember where I got them from, but people said that's where they were originally purchased. These came from my mom. She got them years and years ago. That's probably where she ordered them from. And it's a great way to start supporting your tomatoes, but these are going to get large. So then I also drop in a stake, and eventually the stake will get tied to this cage right here. But that's a great way to support your large tomatoes. This is a weave. It's the T-post that you saw, the five foot post dropped into the ground, a couple of stakes in the middle, and then just some string across the middle and I'm weaving the tomatoes up through there and that will support them. You could do this on a large scale too if you wanted to grow beans. And I think you get the general idea. This is not done yet. This is going to be a big box of string or down this side, across here, and down this way because these are cherry tomatoes and they're going to get massive. I'm going to let all the side shoots, all the suckers grow, and I'm going to have this huge wall of cherry tomatoes. So subscribe to the channel, see how that turns out. I'll be using hydrogen peroxide to deal with the diseases that come here in Maryland Zone 7. So I think they're, they're going to be fine. And then they're just being supported to start with these six foot poles and that will give them enough support to get growing and then I will wrap in the string down these sides as they get bigger and start you know moving left to right and this is another option I'm growing cucumbers you can see them just starting right in there and it's just three poles tied to the top and that's gonna make a nice trellis if I need to I'll put some string right across there and just work my way up but cucumbers tend to um, use their tendrils and hang on pretty well. Hope that gives you some ideas of how you can grow vertically, support your plants, and just different ways that you can develop um, your vertical garden. Doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to be pretty. Once the plants fill in, they cover most of this. You just got to think a little bit, see what resources you have near you that are inexpensive from Home Depot, Lowe's, um, check out your thrift stores. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at the rustedgarden.com. Rusted, yeah, rusted Thanks for watching.